Hey guys, Dr. Isratel here for Renaissance Periodization. And I'm here to talk to you guys today about nutritional priorities for body composition. That is, if you want optimal body composition, the most muscle and least fat, what should your nutritional priorities be? Where should you start with your nutrition? And what's most important and what's least important? Generally speaking, in order to change body composition, we have to make sure that our diet is right, that our training is right, that our lifestyle is right, basically how much sleep you get, how stressed out you are, things of that nature, and also there are supplements, of course. Today we're going to focus on diet in just a very, very basic sense. That is, if you want to make changes to your diet to enhance your body composition, what changes should you make first? What changes should you make least, or what changes really don't amount to anything at all? So let's take a look at it. The first, number one, most important variable that decides whether or not you lose uh, fat or gain muscle is your calorie intake. Calories are number one. If your calories are high enough, you will gain muscle. If they're too low, that really won't happen. If your calories are too high, you won't lose fat. But if they're low enough, fat loss will occur. This is the most important feature of any and every diet designed to alter body composition. Number two, most important in that order, feature of a diet is macronutrient amounts. For example, are you getting in enough protein? Probably the most important question. If you're not, you're going to be at a loss of muscle. If you're getting in enough, that's really good, and you're going to be optimally saturating your blood with amino acids, and you're going to be supporting the muscle growth process and preventing muscle loss. And additionally, carbs and fats are also a consideration. Number three, after you've taken care of your calories in, calories out, and of course your macronutrient amounts, you look at nutrient timing. It's considerably less powerful of an effector, but it still counts for quite a bit. So for nutrient timing, are you eating your carbohydrates around your workout window? Are you eating protein meals spread evenly throughout the day? Those sorts of questions tend to be more important there. But in the grand scheme of things, nutrient timing is not your top two approaches. They sh it shouldn't be the first thing you change in a diet. Last and least is food composition. What kind of glycemic index carbohydrates are you consuming? Are you consuming the proper ratio of, of healthy fats or monounsaturated fats to saturated fats? Where are your protein sources coming from? Are you a vegetarian? Are you eating plenty of meat and eggs, etc.? Those questions are dead last in our nutritional priorities. That is, if you're consuming enough calories to grow muscle, for example, if you're consuming enough protein, carbs, and fats, and if your timing is correct, food composition doesn't really amount to a whole lot. It absolutely makes a difference, but that difference is small. So, graphically represented, calories in, calories out, accounts for maybe 40% or something like that of the total variance of diet success. After you incorporate your macros, that's already a huge fraction of dieting success or total dieting outcome for body composition taken care of right there. N nutrient timing counts for quite a bit, but still a small fraction, and food composition, as you can tell, is barely noticeable uh, uh, up there. So if you want the best approach to dieting, work your way from the bottom of this list all the way to the top. If you get the basics right, the details don't matter a whole lot. Just a couple of real-world tips to sort of leave you guys off. If your calories are correct, that is, for example, if your calories are lower than you need for a maintenance level, you will lose fat and you will lose weight, which is one of the reasons why intermittent fasting, which I'm not a huge fan of, tends to work for a lot of people. It doesn't work great, but it works okay, because if you intermittently fast, your calories are going to be really low and you're going to lose fat, plain and simple. Number two, if you're getting enough protein, carbs, and fats in the right amounts, then you're already a really big step of the way to a very good diet, which is why, if it fits your macros approach, works relatively well. Certainly, I would say better than intermittent fasting, though. Now, timing is important, especially for serious athletes. John Meadows' Mountain Dog Diet is a good example of a diet that addresses every single one of these components all the way through nutrient timing, and it works extremely well. It tends to be a more complicated diet, so it's not just for your average person starting out, but if you're a serious athlete, you have to consider timing. And last but not least, all other features of a diet are the details. So if you're worrying about whether or not you're getting your protein sources from too much egg sources and not enough fish sources, 
you're probably worrying about a minute detail. If you're a serious competitor, maybe that's a concern. But if you're just trying to put on muscle or burn some fat, you had better make sure your calories, your macros, and your timing are set in stone before you worry about the details. Thanks a lot for listening. We'll see you guys next time.